Now I've got some other pictures kind of back down here. So this one here, I was in the Boundary Waters and I, all the roots are so cool. So I just took this picture of these roots and I thought there was a root here that kind of looked like an elephant's trunk. And so I just changed it a little bit, made it look like an elephant's trunk and there were like a couple leaves there. So I turned them into eyes. And here's like another one peeking around. And I just changed the old dirty dirt and leaves to make it look like water. So you can see I just kind of change things around a little bit. And I really like the bright colors and almost a little bit of an imaginary look to it. And this one here, basically there's nothing anything too odd about it. I do have some black and white areas here. Again, I know that people see things differently. Through teaching, I see that kids see colors differently too. And so, so I have that, but this is just basically that tiger lily and then that yellow swallowtail. But it's like, what if you are just another butterfly flying right in there to join that butterfly? It's that close. And I really exaggerate the colors. You have to really look to see what colors really are. And that's the one thing in my teaching too. You have to think about what are colors really? Or don't always think that the sky is blue, the grass is the same green, and dirt is brown. There's purples and there's all these different colors in here. And I think our mind, our rational mind, keeps telling us that things are certain colors and have to be certain ways, but they don't have to be. And here, I was canoeing in the Boundary Waters and Actually, I had just gotten done with this shoulder surgery, so I was the duffer in the middle, so I was taking pictures. But this is just the water, and I thought, what? we don't choose where we live, so what if we were born to live underwater? And so uh, what I did here is I thought, what would it be like to live underwater? So I added like a pair, of, like some stairs going down under the water. Like maybe that's how we would just go home, you know? So just all sorts of different things. And then here's another one. I put a face in there. She's in amongst the grasses. But here, I kind of did it like there's almost like another dimension coming. You know, time travel, all that kind of stuff. I think about that too. So I kind of have this ridge here where the colors have shifted and kind of turned over the edge of that. And this is like in another world. And I put in some little almost like firefly kinds of things in there. So, and then again, this plant here is kind of becoming part of her. So it's all kind of becoming together. And now early on when I first did, now this is only just a couple of years old, but I used to just do like black and white circles because my dad always said when he had that macular degeneration that he lost that center vision and it was just kind of a circular area that got wider and wider and wider. And I think a lot of people know people that have that issue. So he only ended up with a little bit of that peripheral. So at the beginning, he had these circular areas. And so that's what I did here. I just did three circular areas where in that area, I know that he didn't say things were twisting and turning, but that's just what I did. He just said they were always just kind of really blurry and darkish. Now, this one here, I went to the farmer's market and I thought, you know, we all, we look at the green beans and we think green beans, okay. And then these are um, peaches and those are, you know, carrots and different things. But you wouldn't expect to see a goldfish in a glass ball there. But how maybe we wouldn't expect to see that so we don't see it? Are we missing things? I wonder about that too. And then I, this, for this one, I had my daughter just reach over the top of my picture and I traced her hand and made that bla a black and white area too. So again, you look at it and you think, oh, this is just vegetables, you know, this is the, this is, it is what it is, but look carefully. And here's a couple giraffes that the wind is blowing so hard that the spots are flying off. And I have the wheat here. The wheat is just kind of going like this and those are black and white. So again, just different things. And here's another one. I had this really cool photograph I'd taken of ferns before they're really all out. They're all kind of curled up. So here's these curled up ferns and I put like little, t little lion faces in there. But I also did some changing of colors, shifting of things, put some stripes in things, black and white and things. So, you know, I love to draw them out. I draw them all out with pencil 
And then as I'm putting the chalk on there, I'll just shift and change and make it up as I go. That's what I do. Um, one thing I, else I wanted to mention is that, you know, we're t teaching kids and what I find with kids, you know, this being creative has been such a big important part of my life and if I don't have a chance to doodle or do something creative, I get a little angsty and in this time, um, and, or any time, kids have so much anxiety that kids just eat up the, the ability to be creative. I, t I tell them, you know, everybody needs a way to be creative, whether it's writing poetry or building something or um, doing art or music or anything that they can be creative. And I, you, you would be amazed at how creative a lot of these kids are and the ideas they come up. So arts are alive and well, and it's so important to keep the arts in the schools because it just like when they walk into my room, it's like a whole new world opens up and it's just, I, you know, I have music playing and things like that and everybody is accepted and everybody has to have worth and have value and have, understand that it's important for feelings to be out there and not just bottle them all up so they all have anxiety. So we have to be free to be who we are. And I think who we are changes through the years. I mean, I am not who I was in high school, but there's still parts of me that are still there that I like to be out in nature and I like to doodle and draw and things like that. So don't forget your inner child either. So all that is part of it. And I have a lot more artwork and I have a website and I think my information, it's dianegronwald.artspan.com and you can, or, uh, I'll commission pieces, you can order pieces through me. Um, I have an email, I think it's going to be put out there, dianegronwald at gmail.com. But I'm also part of the Art of World. Art of World is the big art crawl that's down in the Northeast Minneapolis. And um, that's going to be virtual this year too. So if you go to that, you know, search out Art of World on May 15th, my artwork's going to be on there, plus a lot of other artists, all sorts of different kinds of art. And so you can order things off of there too. But otherwise, contact me. I'll do some portrait commissions or any kind of commissions. I have people give me, oh, my mom used to love this flower. Here's a f picture I took. And I'll take it and play with it. So just let me know. And it's been a joy talking with you today. And I hope you have a great day great artistic day and in the years to come.